Welcome to the Osmosis Daily Report on the coronavirus pandemic. I'm Dr. Risha Desai. I'm a chief medical officer here at Osmosis. I'm also a pediatric infectious disease doctor, and I used to work at the CDC in the Division of Viral Diseases. Today I want to talk about caring for vulnerable populations and specifically really creative solutions that I've seen uh, that illustrate how we can do this and how others might want to do this as well. So let's start uh, right here in uh, the Bay Area. There's a great story about homelessness and coronavirus Specifically, the San Francisco city officials have been working with hotel uh, owners and have identified over 8,000 hotel rooms to house people that need to isolate but don't have a home. Uh, they specifically identified 4,500 people that are in this situation that are uh, essentially experiencing homelessness and are going to try to get those folks housed. A, that is the right thing to do anyway. It's, it's a very humanitarian uh, thing to do and morally the right thing to do. Um, but B, it also helps with um, mitigating the, the, the spread of COVID-19, which is also critical right now. My hope here is that more cities can adopt something like this uh, and also that we start thinking about things like this well after COVID-19 is over because obviously if you're experiencing homelessness and that's uh, a need that is going to continue uh, well into the months ahead, and getting housing is so critical for, for many reasons. Next is a great story about feeding uh, folks in need. So we talked about housing and now food is of course another basic need. Refugee chefs are cooking free meals for vulnerable DC residents. Uh, there's a wonderful little picture here that shows you how delicious the food looks. Uh, it's food from Cote d'Ivoire and there are two chefs here and the group is called uh, Tables Without Borders that's helping to facilitate this. But here's uh, the, the key part. They basically are hiring uh, a couple of chefs, and this is happening more than just with, with this group, but two chefs who made 250 meals over the course of a 10-hour day, and those meals were then delivered to Latin American immigrant clients. So uh, lots of kind of feel-good uh, angles on this, but the bottom line is that food is a necessity, and Tables Without Borders is figuring out a way to facilitate meals getting out there. Uh, and this is just uh, obviously a, a wonderful. Another vulnerable group, of course, are the elderly, as well as people living with disabilities that, that may have a hard time getting essentials that they need from the store. So that's where this story comes in. It's a mailman who delivers essential items to quarantine neighbors, and he says, I'm doing this to keep people inside. This is a picture of the uh, young man who's doing it. His name is Kyle. And essentially what he's doing is he printed out 400 copies of a note and left it with these residents uh, in their mailboxes uh, in particularly, you know, in particular the folks uh, that are elderly as well as people with disabilities, and then they would actually send him a shopping list with money, and he would go and get whatever they needed and would drop it off to them. So, really a beautiful story of uh, something happening at a very organic level, very community level, and ideally this sort of thing would be kind of uh, happening all across America to help many, many people in need. Another vulnerable population, of course, are students and kids. And the key here is that they're uh, having a difficult time uh, staying and keeping up with school and learning. And so there's a group out there called Transportant. It's a company that owns uh, buses, and those buses are outfitted with mobile Wi-Fi. And so one of the things that uh, happened is that they had a request come in, and they said, look, you know, can we figure out a way to get essentially mobile or moving study halls where you know there might be defined times when a bus is in a certain neighborhood or area and then students could upload homework or download materials and then continue to learn by, by doing that. And the, the company said, you know, absolutely. And they've been working to roll this out in, in a couple of places. Uh, they cite Kansas City, Iowa, and Texas. It's a really neat solution, very clever solution to keep students learning. Finally, the, the population that comes to mind when we think of vulnerable is, of course, the group that is suffering with COVID-19. We have patients in hospitals and they're not allowed, in many cases, to be with family because of the contagiousness of the disease. So families are at home oftentimes worried about their loved ones. And so there's a group called COVID Tech Connect that came in and they're offering tablets to patients so they can speak to their loved ones get the empathy, the, the love and support that they need during this extremely stressful um, time and, and to try to make sure that they heal and recover uh, with their family by their side. So it's a really great solution and particularly important now, I want to just flag, for folks that aren't comfortable in the American healthcare system. So for example, if you're not comfortable speaking English or if that's not your first language, 
something like this can really be a big game changer because now you can connect with uh, family and friends that may advocate for you and may be able to speak on your behalf. And so this is so helpful in, in those settings in particular. So a really wonderful solution here. So all in all, lots of really creative solutions for, for helping with vulnerable populations. My hope here is that A, these solutions get adopted more broadly, and B, that these solutions don't simply end once COVID-19 is over, that issues like housing and food insecurity really get addressed using some of these same strategies and solutions and that this goodwill doesn't just sort of dissipate away because we know that those issues are, are important for so many reasons and will continue to be important well beyond uh, COVID-19. So thank you so much for tuning in. I want you to hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon if you want to get daily updates. Also check out osmosis.org slash COVID-19 for our resources. Remember to do your part to flatten the curve and raise the line because we're all in this together. Thanks a lot.